Okay, folks, we are streaming live. I hope y'all folks can see what's going on. I got this thing working, the Face OSC, and it's pretty dope. Here goes my mic, by the way. I'm using a blue, a blue mic. Uh, I forgot exactly the company, but it's a really dope mic, and I highly recommend for y'all folks to get it. I'm gonna put it in the video's description, in the video's description area. It's a Snowball Blue Ice or blue snowball ice um, actual microphone and it's really crystal clear now if you notice the face OSC over here is going off screen and on screen is coming on and off is because I'm trying to move my head a little bit and I'm not thinking about um, what it's actually doing to control the character now I am having some issues with the mouth as you can see is not working that great when I move my face from left to right it kinda is jumpy and the mouth of my character is opening way too wide but this is better than nothing I got it to the best that I can get it at the moment and it's pretty stable compared to what I had it before in um, my first iteration when I was first trying to get the, the face OSC now, if y'all folks are not familiar with anything that I'm doing right here, pretty much you can watch my previous video. I was showcasing how to get this on your computer and for Blender, because this is actually a Blender add-on, um, more like an external software to Blender, but there's an add-on on Blender known as Connector that I got recently. And I had got it actually a while back, but this is the updated version. So I just want y'all y'all folks to see it. So I'm moving the screen a little bit where I have my face OSC showing my actual face. So um, this is the app or how would you say the add-on that's in Blender. If y'all folks don't know about Blender, definitely do some research. Type in Blender uh, 3D modeling or something like that or just type in Blender. You should be able to get it um, on Google and eventually try your best to play around and learn. Watch as many YouTube videos as you possibly can about Blender and how to make it useful for yourself. But basically it's about 3D models and trying to create animations which are 3D models. And you can also create movies like video, edit videos on Blender. You can do like um, all kinds of stuff. So as you can see, this is not the best facial mocap for a 3D character but like I said it beats having nothing right now and it's because of how I arranged my actual webcam and how I got it set up I got a light on the side over here I can show y'all folks it goes a light and when I put the light for some reason it, it was affecting my mocap so but I also tried a green screen behind me with a green screen background and that's where it really didn't work that great at all so um, whenever I put the light on with the green screen behind me it would affect the visual of the OSC the face OSC and it wouldn't track it wouldn't track my face it wouldn't um, be able to detect where my face is so let me get to who created this let's go over to his actual YouTube video uh, this guy is known as Remo Rickley. I highly recommend for y'all folks to go to his channel because he is the developer of this Face OSC connector add-on. But most definitely, the Face OSC is now what he's offering as part of the connector add-on for Blender. In the past, he was offering what is known as the connector add-on using the Connect 2 by Microsoft. The actual Connect like when you use your the webcam tied into an Xbox 360 or Xbox One but actually the Connect 2 version was for Xbox One so he pretty much came up with a way to utilize the Connect 2 using this connector add-on that he created and he went hard and he came up with a way for us to control a character and you can do a full body uh, mocap using it where you, you basically need a rig character either from Make Human or from um, 
the Manuel Bastioni lab, the newer version that they have now, which is known as MB lab. It's a more of a different iteration from the old Manuel Bastioni lab. And that is built into Blender as well as an add-on. So if you got all of that stuff running on your system, you should be able to use this add-on slash this uh, face OSC now, which is the newer update uh, type of uh, more like a uh, secondary software that he built outside of the connector add-on. So you got to have the connector add-on itself on Blender, get the update into Blender, and then work it out. So like I said, you could check out my previous video that I made to see how all of that comes into play. I'm not going to cover that in this video since I already did it. Um, so th this is his website. Just go to his video. I'll try. I, I think I put the link in the actual video description for this live stream. So y'all folks want to go to his video, check out what he has to offer. He talks a good detail of how to make this work for you. And hold on one second. I got something making noise in the background, which shouldn't be doing that. Actually, I don't know. My phone just jumped up and started communicating. <laughs> that was silly. That should not have happened. I'm going to shut off my phone, by the way. Shut this off so I don't have a problem with audio in the background trying to cause problems with my video. So there we go. That's his that's his video. Sorry that the, the, the audio level dropped a little bit, but I had to drop my microphone because I'm doing a live stream and you shouldn't have like background noise in the background. So um let's see. So that's that video. Here goes mine, the face OSC for MB Lab uh, Blender Connector Add-on. That's the part one version. I did it two days ago so I just wanted y'all folks to see that I got this working and it took me some little time to figure it out what happened was I'm gonna show you something else on my computer uh, let's go out I have this thing known as face rig so face rig actually caused a problem for face OSC they two different separate software from different developers the reason why FaceRig caused the problem is because it does very similar things with the webcam and it it provides a virtual webcam that you can use on maybe like OBS Studio. So here goes OBS Studio, uh, you can see the mirror stuff going on and if you wanted to create like, I'm going to hit the plus and if I wanted to create a video capture and turn uh, more like the, the, what do they call it? face what was I talking about hold on one second face rig so say I wanted face rig to be on OBS studio I hit the plus down here on this sources area for OBS studio and I go to video capture device and then I have to select whether I want to add a new one or whatever so I click OK to add a new one and then what I would do is I would select from here so it would give me a virtual camera kind of like this it says OBS virtual camera but it would give me a face rig virtual camera option so what I chose to do is delete the the actual virtual camera driver so what face rig does it sends a camera driver to your computer when you get it downloaded onto your computer and you want to get an external source that will provide that feed so you can do live streams outside of face rig so that's where the virtual camera came in, but it, it caused conflict because I'm going to show you over here. When you bring up the face OSC, you get this uh, default thing, not really default, but this is like your DOS uh, side of your computer. And it basically shows the details of things that are going on. And in this area, it said that my camera wasn't detected. And you can just read the details just to see if there's a camera detected over here. So my camera wasn't detected. You also can change the settings and load up a movie, like a pre-recorded video, uh, .move or .mp4, I believe. And when you get that um, set up, you have to follow the instructions, obviously, in order to make it work. But um, I didn't do that. I chose to use a, web a webcam. So my webcam wasn't detected. And like I said, it's because of face rig being the default for some reason on my computer. So I didn't know how to change that default for the video driver. So what I did is I just went in and I deleted it. So I went to my start menu. If you have that problem, just go to your start menu and then you can look up um, 
uh, hold on one second control panel or whatever if you don't have the control panel you throw up the control panel and then you just try to get rid of it go to uninstall and it should show up over here so I had face rig and the the virtual see it says face rig virtual audio driver here so I had face rig virtual video driver that was in there so I deleted it now I'm pretty sure I can get it back once I try to get face rig back on my computer hundred percent but you don't have to delete the whole entire face rig but um, I probably can get this video driver back just by searching it on Google or maybe going to the face rig website so I'm not worried about it too much but um, once I got that deleted uh, all I had to do is pretty much load it up again load up face OSC and then it started to detect my webcam and my webcam came up automatically so what face OSC does it sends signals into your webcam and it tries to track your face as you can see it's not really doing too good at the moment I got all kinds of stuff going on in my scene uh, in terms of my house right here so could be a lot of things are causing a detection to lose communication so you probably don't want to have it too bright and too dim but now you can see I turned the light off and now it's tracking a lot better so that's really a really important super important part of getting your character to move smoothly and as you can see now I'm, I'm moving the head and now I'm basically able to talk with it now another thing that you probably are gonna have to do is go into the bone structure of your character now oh I did not show the full finalization of the manual bastioni lab character from my part one of this video so what I could do is show y'all folks how to finalize a character and start it over from scratch so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go in and go to new and go to general and start over from scratch so you can see the whole process for those who didn't get to see it and for those who um, pretty much missed that part in part one if you watched the live stream but um all you got to do once you got the manual bestioni lab or mb lab add-on on blender you're going to look for what type of character you want say i wanted a uh, anime female i don't know if the animes are going to work with this software but uh, let's try to anime you go in we're going to use ev engine just like uh like uh the guy let's go back to his channel what's his name uh, i kind of forget all the time i forget his name like uh, Remo so just like Remo shows in his video he shows exactly that part in terms of finalizing the character so you go in change this to EV engine and then you just go in and hit the create character uh, link or button my cat's trying to get on top of me sorry sorry midnight so once you do that it throws the character into the viewport and we're gonna try to see if we can get this character to work instead of the regular regular human character so we're gonna pull her face into view we're going to rotate a little bit right now I'm just using one hand because I'm holding my mic up and I'm just gonna stay on the the wire frame viewport you can change your views over here see it says viewport shading I don't want it to take up too much of my computer while I'm doing this so I just want it to be set up here like that so I can get through fast Now I'm not going to change the character too much that'll take a lot of extra time on my live stream I just want to get through with the finalization for y'all folks another thing that I had a problem with when I was trying to finalize I had uh, old uh, newer versions of blender so I have blender 2.9 2.91 and 2.92 as you can see I have four different ones in the bottom of my computer down here see these tabs so this is the older version blender 2.81 I believe that works the best with this add-on with the MB lab add-on so if you don't have the MB lab add-on try to go to it you can check in the video description area I got a link in that as well should be able to get you to it and you can also go to uh, this guy's website which he features here uh, https uh, www.weez.com 
W-I-E-S-E.L-I. So W-I-E-S-E dot L-I. Check out his website and it gives you the link as well to that particular um, web website that you need, the MB Lab. Or you could type in MB Lab on Google. Let's do that real quick. MB Lab. And you should be able to pull it up. Uh, not this one. This one here, I think, where it says download MB Lab official. Should be it. No, this is not it. It looks like it, but I don't think that's the official one. Uh, I believe this one from the GitHub. This is the one that you should go to. So if you see the GitHub page like this, it says github.io, this is the official one. And then you can go to see it shows the MB Lab characters. This is the kind of character that I had. All right, so that's what this add-on is working for. I didn't try it with MakeHuman. I don't think it works with MakeHuman in terms of the face OSC working with uh, the connector add-on for Blender to pretty much control your character's face using your webcam. So this is the most recent one here, Blender 2.81. I don't think they have a newer version. And if, if they do, it's not showcased here, so it could be somewhere else. But this is the latest one, I think. So like I said, try to get that Blender 2.81. If you don't got Blender 2.81 and you got a newer version or older version, try to fetch it on Blender.org. So that's that. Um, what else was I going to go and do? Let me go back. All right. So now that you got all that information, we're going to try to finalize the character. So you go to Finalize Tools, hit that little check arrow, and it drops the Finalize Tools open. We're going to deselect where it says save images by clicking it and it's no longer blue because we don't want to save the images and do all the rest of the details that it shows here. We can go to the left. We don't need to back up the character or anything. So what we're going to do right now is just hit the finalize option. In order to get the character to work, you have to finalize it. And if you don't, then it will not work the way that it's supposed to. Now, the, the newer versions of Blender, you won't be able to go this far where it basically leaves the character customization screen and now the character is ready so it won't go to the screen if you're on the newer versions of blender i tried it many times the, the other live session and it didn't go to it so keep that in mind so that's why i decided to get the, the older version 2.81 so now what we're going to do is go to connector make sure that you get the updated connector version and that's from his website like I was talking about so let's go to his website we're gonna go to site and let's see go to connector and go all the way down to the bottom and it's gonna be over here so it says download and install the updated connector so that's where you want to get it you get that link and that will go to your computer and this face osc connector.zip you don't have to unzip it it's just a python file not a coder so a python file basically for coders but he's a coder he knows how all that works i don't know how it works all you got to do is tie it into your blender through the blender preferences as an add-on so this is basically the the connector add-on and this is the latest update so once you get it on your computer go to blender go to edit Go to preferences and then go to install click this install option and then you're going to look where it is on your computer nine times out of ten it's going to be located in your downloads so i got mine in my 3d uh, models or 3d objects folder so i go to blender go to add-ons and mine's is right here face osc dash connector dot zip since i already did it I don't have to do it again, but you, you left click it and click install add on in the bottom right corner. Once you do that, it should show up on the screen here, which I'll show y'all folks. Let's get out of here. And I can even type it in here face OSC. Nope, that's not it. Oh, connector. Sorry, it's called connector. There it is. So see, it says connector receiver. So I already got it and you just hit the check mark in this little box here and that will activate it then it shows up on the right side of the screen where you see these tabs and basically you should be ready to go 
Now, one of the things that you have to realize is you have to click and select the, the rig. So that means these bones. I'll show you how it looks real quick so you can see the face. All right, so you're gonna see this little stub on the top of the character, just select it and it turns little orange like it glows. Let's go back to wireframe. So you see it's all glowing and orange. Once you got that selected, you're gonna pretty much hit this move option. This move option is gonna take the rig and it's gonna recreate the naming for it. So the nomenclature for the rig right here in your outliner area on Blender will turn into connector one once you hit the move. See, I hit move, I, I clicked it with my left click mouse button and it shows connector one. Once that shows up, that means that it's ready to be actually tied in to your uh, face OSC connection and communications. So if you watch my previous video, it showed you about the port and how you can change it. And you have to also change the, uh, the server host that is hosting it through because the communications of face OSC is going through a server host and connecting through a port on your computer. So we're gonna hit start and see if we got some kind of a functional movement and it's working. As you can see, the character's uh, mouth and face is moving to some degree, but the head is not moving. But let's, let's see how it looks now. We're gonna go in and you can see it's working pretty good. I actually like this and how it works a little bit better than the other character. So I might actually create these type of characters, these anime looking characters, and actually use those instead of the regular character. Uh, in terms of the, the head not moving, you have to go in to pose mode and you have to select just the bone, the head bone. So let's go to wireframe and select just the head bone. Once you select the head bone, you have to change this, I believe, to XYZ Euler. And it is already that, but for some reason, I couldn't get it to work when I first tried it. Um, not sure exactly why it's not changing, but the mode right now is not in the right mode. So that took me a little while to get it to work out the way it's supposed to work. Um... So I don't know why that part is not changing the way it's supposed to change, but that's basically what you have to do to get it to work. So other than that, that's it in a nutshell. And this is proving that you can actually use it with this particular type of character, which is pretty dope, but I'm not getting a good deal when it comes to getting this moving. So um, let me go in and just check other locations and maybe okay so it's the reason why it didn't work is because I was in this location the object properties you have to be in the bone properties in order to get the head bone to change to XYZ Euler so that's what it is now I got it working and I got the head moving and but the mouth isn't moving as good but um that's one thing I guess you're gonna lose uh, the actual mouth is not moving that good at all. You see that? If you notice it. Okay, so let's switch over and I'll show y'all folks how I look with it side by side. Uh, let's see. Move this over a little bit so you can see. And we're going to go in and bring the character in. Now it's working a little bit better because my head is not moving that much. But if I move my head a little... I guess it's, it's going to work. It just takes a little time to play with it. And as you can see, I'm moving my head. And it is not work. It's, it's actually working pretty decent. It's not too bad. Now, say I wanted to create a video of the actual movement and everything that you see. Actually, let's go to Eevee and see how Eevee looks. Let's change the background to like a dark background. And see if this looks a little better. The actual uh, texture doesn't look that great, but I could work on the texture. It takes some time for that. But pretty much is working really good, as you can see. Um, you just gotta finagle it and play around with the angle of your webcam. 
and then you should be able to get it to work for yourself and I think it's pretty dope so what we're gonna do from here um, what was I thinking about what do, what do I need to do um, kind of had a brain fart right there I forgot exactly oh in terms of getting it to record the movement in motion so what you want to do say you wanted to move the rest of the body let's let's try that actually so since we're in pose mode we can go into wireframe and we can select other body parts to try to move so let's move this part and rotate it just a little bit hold on one second all right that's not the bone to move this bone let's move this bone boom and let's move this bone just a little bit down so it looks normal to some degree and then another thing we're gonna do is rotate while we're talking we're gonna rotate this part of the body so it looks like we're actually moving around doing something and then we're going to hit the record this is like a record button but actually this is auto keying so if you ever learned about animation on blender that's basically how you're gonna start recording and recording your keyframes so here goes the keyframe uh, how would you say more like a indicator of where it's at but this is more like a, a play area I forgot the exact uh, title of it it's hold on one second the timeline so it's the timeline and once you hit the play button you're gonna be tracking it so I hit the play and now I'm moving around and I made a little error right there but for rotation I want to rotate and get a good rotation um, let's try this again in, term, in terms of selecting uh, come on uh, rotate in the Z let's do R Z okay there we go now the problem I'm having here is that I only had a short period of time that I put for start to finish so I'm gonna put this at around 1500 I'm gonna start it over um, let's see select all the keys delete them delete all keyframes and now we're gonna go into playing and hold on one second RZ okay and just try to act like I'm doing some moves and talking moving left to right hey guys how you doing pretty cool right just having fun over here trying to get this character to work and create an animation why not right okay cool all right so hit the hit the pause and then we're gonna put the the playhead where's the playhead at we're gonna move the playhead all the way back here and show y'all folks from the playback what it looks like and the reason why I got it in wireframe is because I want it basically to take up less CPU and GPU on my computer so now we're gonna switch over to viewport shading um, to Eevee and I'm gonna stop it so it doesn't record my face and my tracking so I'm gonna hit the stop button here with the left click mouse button and now I'm gonna hit the play so you can see on the timeline what it what it recorded so there you go this is exactly what I recorded I can turn this into animation over time uh, it's actually animation now but I could turn it into like animated footage film footage and stuff like that once I get the character fully outfitted with clothes and stuff it may actually look like something that is worthy of utilizing and then you can go in and clean up the animations which he he talks about that Remo talks about that in his video of how to clean up a lot of the animations you can go into let's see uh, this is the the mode controller or editor type controller you go in and uh, I think it's video is a video sequence no it's not video sequencer it's uh, graph editor or nonlinear animation I think you can go into the graph editor though when you go into the graph editor you can see all the details and zoom in on the graph 
and see exactly what the animation graph is showcasing and this is all of the extreme stuff that the character has done with the um these are more of the keyframes regarding the animation so i deselected it somehow but if i get the timeline and i bring it over here you can see where certain things are happening and let's pull this down a little bit so when I'm moving this across the timeline this is where you start to see the extreme move movement so like see this big hike up of a peak this big green peak here that's a signal of this movement of the head watch the head move real fast or the, the whole body move real fast so that's that part right there you know I don't know how, to, how this stuff works because I'm not into using this but looks like you have to do different things so let's see if I hit normalize and what did that do I don't know what that did that did something weird so let's hit the play and see what it does uh, let's try to bring out another one and then come up with the timeline here we go bring out the timeline and hit the play oh that was a more smooth transition much faster but it look it looked like a smooth transition watch boom so that's what that did so I normalized this part of the animation by selecting it all you gotta do is click one of the the little icons and you can actually move these these little looks like node points or whatever but I'm not going to move it. But there you go, folks. Hopefully this video helps you into getting this particular face OSC on your computer and being able to manipulate and play with it using Blender with the connector add-on. But um, yeah, this proves that you can do anything pretty much today if you have enough uh, motivation and de determination to do it. And thanks to Remo, this guy Remo, he went very hard and extreme. So I highly recommend for y'all folks to give him all the credit for coming up with this software he's the developer and this is his website like I said again weasley.li go spread some love for him and um, if he has other ways for it, for love to be spread it should be on this website it could help him out to keep developing this stuff and to go even further from what he already done but all the details of what I did in the first actual part and the second part is all here is detailed here I just went in and I did a little bit more explanation of certain aspects and elements that I had problems with when I first tried to get it working and my computer did have some hiccups and issues so as you can see uh, it's basically eight steps and pretty much have fun hopefully y'all folks like this video feel free to subscribe hit the thumbs up and if you think it's gonna help other people through this process feel free to share it socially but this is dope. Uh, I'm going to try to get it working for the Make Human characters and see if I can come up with another video if I do get it working. If not, it's all good. I'll be throwing up some other videos in the future uh, based on Blender and many other different software that I have to offer. And that's all I got. I'm out. Peace.